Hello everyone, Wade from High Tech Legion here, and with over 1500 videos uploaded, if you haven't seen it here, you may not have seen it anywhere. So in this video, I'm going to be giving you an overview of ClickBIOS 4 using the OC series motherboards. So what we have here is a very simple setup actually, with six sections here on the left and right, and then our heads up information on the top here which gives us information on our boot device priority our current CPU and CPU frequency DRAM frequency and the memory size as well as the version of the BIOS that's being used the date our time and a way to take a screenshot of your BIOS would be using F12 if you have a USB drive plugged in you also have a way to change the language and an X to exit the BIOS. Right here on this little pane, we have two buttons. We have the OC Genie button and now quick access to XMP profiles. So if you click that button, it'll enable the XMP profile on your memory and set all those settings appropriately. We also have a quick heads up of temperatures for the CPU and the motherboard and of course the model of the motherboard we're, being, we're using. Under OC profile, we have the ability to save up to six OC profiles. You can load them from the ROM, you can save them to a USB drive, and you can load them from a USB drive. So before doing an update of your BIOS, of course, I recommend if you have overclocking profiles into here to back them up to a USB drive so you don't have any chance of losing them. One thing you'll notice is when we scroll over a setting, we get a little information over here on the right a uh, little quick help on what that setting is for and we also have our information on how to navigate the BIOS right here. As we scrolled over to the side you saw that the other buttons popped up again so we can go into other settings such as our hardware monitor. Our hardware monitor gives us lots of great information on our CPU and system, gives us temperature and allows us to set fan curves in here as well as your voltages down here you can set all to full speed set them all to default or cancel these settings out of course you have an about and a help here as well as an X to close the hardware monitor under board explorer definitely one of the best features of these motherboards is you are able to scroll over and see what's plugged into the highlighted areas so we're scrolling over a system fan connector and it's actually giving us the information on the fan what RPM it's spinning at. If we scroll over our PCI Express X16 slot we get information that we have an ATI graphics card an AMD 280X plugged in actually and we have information on our memory here as well as shows you what each area is. As you see we scroll over the SATA ports and it shows us which ones are populated and what drives are in them. Um, one thing that definitely would be nice in my mind is if the uh, these ports actually said which controller they're using when you scroll over them. Granted it does say that in the specifications so you'll know if you're using port 1 through 6 you're using the Intel controller and if you're using port 7 through 10 you're using as media controllers but it still would be nice to be able to see that right on this board explorer so if we close that out we have our M flash section M flash section allows you to boot BIOS boot function which will boot off a USB flash disk to update the BIOS you can save the BIOS to storage or you can select a file to update the BIOS right from here. Under OC you have of course probably what all you are looking for the most important functions on an overclocking motherboard how to overclock your system. You have two settings here which is an addition to this version of click BIOS a simple mode and an advanced mode. Simple mode gives you a lot less options here um, and if you are a basic overclocker and just like the having a high-end board definitely something to consider changing it to simple mode but under advanced you can set the extreme OC setup you can set your CPO ratio mode 
the CPU ratio itself, you would scroll over this and hit the plus and minus keys to um, actually adjust these. And you would also have your EIS team mode, your turbo boost, enhanced turbo, different type of legacy tweaking, OCG, function control, whether pressing the button turns it on or whether only turning it on the BIOS will allow it. Of course, you have your base clock megahertz here and all the stuff that goes along with your base clock settings, your DRAM reference clock. We have our XMP profile enabled, so our memory was automatically set to DDR3-2400. Another new addition here is Memory Triad. Memory Triad allows you to try to get a higher performance boost out of your memory, so you can try setting uh, the CL latency level to different things and see if your memory will take it. DRAM timing, timing mode, DRAM training configuration here, as well as memory fast boot. Voltage settings. Of course you have all your voltage settings here for your overclocking. The ones with the brackets around them allow you to click on them and set the set and enable or disable or set the voltage manually and the ones that do not have the brackets require you to highlight over them and use the plus and minus to adjust the offsets or the voltages themselves. Under other settings you have it enable whether the memory was changed or the CPU was changed that gives you a little warning when the system boots up if you've changed memory or CPU CPU specifications and technology information on what your CPU supports. You can use this little back button here to get back to those main screens. You also have a memory Z which gives you information on each stick of memory that's installed and your CPU features. So you can enable or disable certain CPU features under here if you'd like to and of course our basic settings here we've got a system status screen which allows you to change the date and time as well as giving you information on what's plugged into your ports just sort of like your board explorer but in a text version and DMI information for the board itself obviously this stuff doesn't really matter to most people but with a special utility you can actually program these to be filled in so if you're pulling up ADA, for example, you get this information as notes. Under advanced, you have all kinds of options here for the PCI subsystem, for your ACPI settings for your power LED, which integrated peripherals are enabled, and your SATA mode, AHCI mode, which this board does default to it, which is good since most drives support that and operating systems require that at this point. You have your integrated graphics configuration which graphics adapter starts up first. Rapid start technology whether that's enabled or not. Your USB configuration. Intel Smart Connect technology whether that's enabled. Power management so the EUP 2013, whether that's enabled or disabled, whether the system turns back on automatically after a power loss, defaults to power off, onboard function of the LED control. You have your Windows 8 and 8.1 feature specifically, so if you enable fast boot or MSI fast boot. I would not enable both of them if I were you because it'll be practically impossible to get back into your BIOS without using the go to BIOS button on the motherboard which this one happens to have brings you straight into the BIOS on boot but that'll allow you to boot up Windows a little bit faster if you have really no need to get into your uh, BIOS you have wake up event scheduling and you also have information on your NIC configuration here. Boot menu, full screen logo display, go to BIOS, enable, disable. So if you press the button, this actually flips this to enable. And if you enable this in the BIOS and save it, then it's going to boot right into the BIOS again. Boot mode, select 
with their legacy in UEFI are selected. If you're using Windows 7, it's going to use legacy. And if you're using Windows 8, it's going to use UEFI boot options. So here you can set the fixed boot priority order. You set your hard drive disk boot order here. And under USB hard disk, you can set your boot order for that. And UEFI hard disk boot order. So I'm using Windows 8, so this is actually what it's going to grab the Windows Boot Manager here first. Security settings, of course you can set an administrator password on it, and you also have uh, the chassis intrusion uh, detection that you can set to enabled. So if the door is pulled off of your chassis, this will set a little warning message off uh, when you boot up your system to say that it's been taken off. Save and exit. Of course, you can discard and exit. You can save your changes and reboot. You can just save your changes or discard them. Restore to optimal default, and also set your boot override on this page. So, as you can see, fairly basic interface to navigate. Lots of settings, lots of overclocking settings that you can get into, and they've definitely added a few nice things, such as the hardware monitor and board explorer in here. There are extras. Your X and P button on the front is definitely really cool. So if you're just doing some basic overclocking or you just want to use the built-in stuff, you can come in here, click the OCG button, click the X and P button, save your changes and exit, and you don't have to mess with any other settings, and you'll get a, a little decent performance boost as well as your memory being set to the proper speeds. Of course, if you want to do some more advanced stuff, you certainly have those options with this board you have everything that you could possibly want for overclocking whether you're using air cooling, water cooling, or even LN2 cooling to break some records. I hope you enjoyed this overview of ClickBios 4. For the full review please see www.hitechlegion.com and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter pages. And take care.